Hey, welcome back to theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Again, that website address is theclinicaltrialsguru.com. <clears throat> I try to bring you guys the best content and information possible. And as far as I know, the only type of content like this that exists anywhere, surprisingly, uh, on the entire internet. And that is content specifically aimed at research clinics, CROs, other types of research organizations, uh, principal investigators, hopeful investigators, um, people who hopefully one day want to work in the industry, and even study participants. I've got tons of content, especially from the past, from the good old days back in 2010 when I first started this blog. Uh, for study participants. I've interviewed study participants and I think later on I'll get into more of that kind of content uh, as the years progress. I think there is more opportunity in that space because that's not really being provided <clears throat> that well uh, in our industry. But anyways, today's video is for your research clinics out there specifically and even some of you CROs because you're caught in the middle of this and drug companies too. And uh, actually, one of my clinics today got a phone call from a Medicare. Yeah, that's right, Medicare. Um, the U.S. government, basically. They asked for uh, a particular protocol, which I will obviously not mention the sponsor. And they asked for a list of all the patients, as well as their, uh, their names of the patients, and any identifying information which actually goes against every HIPAA law that I know, and I'm no attorney, but I'd like to get Darshan Kulkarni, who is an attorney on the show, to talk about this uh, very soon. Actually, we're due for another interview. But it basically, Medicare is requesting patient information for patients that joined a particular clinical trial where uh, apparently when they had an adverse event or a serious adverse event, the um, uh, Medicare actually paid for the medical fees that study participants uh, incurred because of their participation in the study. So they were asking for anyone who had an SAE, serious adverse event, or an adverse event, uh, their name and uh, information. And my site told them they have to check with the sponsor, and they did a good job of this and they told them that they will check back with them later and from what I understand Medicare got kind of aggressive with my site and told them that uh, they'll keep calling um, every week if they have to and as far as they understand they've spoken with the sponsor about this issue and as far as any HIPAA laws are concerned uh, they're covered by the informed consent. I guess Medicare is part of that. So this is where we, we're getting into some legal issues. <clears throat> and the way it works is, at least in theory, the way it works is if you're a study participant and you're in a clinical trial and uh, you get an adverse event or a serious adverse event that requires hospitalization or other type of medical care, the drug company is supposed to pay for those costs as long as the site, the research clinic, and the principal investigator were following the protocol. The drug company, the sponsor, is supposed to pay for those medical fees. Well, what actually happens more often than not, from my understanding and from what I've been hearing from other sites, is let's say someone at a site has an SAE and they end up at a hospital. What usually happens there is that the hospital takes over when it comes to billing and they do what they know to do, which is to bill the private insurance of that study participant or to bill Medicare because the hospital doesn't care whether this person who's in the emergency room got there because they were in a study or they just got there because they had something happen to them. They're primary concern, as it should be, is the safety of the, the immediate safety of the patient. So the way it should work in theory is when these study participants end up in a hospital, 
um, and they incur bed days and they have uh, hospital bills. The sponsor is supposed to pay the hospital uh, for their services. And what often happens, more often than not, is the hospital bills Medicare or some other insurance. And the research clinics, they don't really know what to do because they're not they don't specialize in medical billing so they just assume the hospital knows what they're doing and ultimately the sponsor gets away with not having to pay for the medical fees and I, it looks like Medicare is catching on to this which I'm surprised it took them this long but because I've been in this industry for 10 years and I've seen this occur numerous times not just at my clinics but um, different places where there's the hospital First of all, these hospitals, their billing, their billing systems are um, horrible as far as organizing and keeping track of actual costs. Um, so it may take months after the hospital service has occurred that they even send a bill and they usually send it to the patient's insurance because that's where that's where 99 percent of their billing comes from. So clinical trials is going to fall into that same category even though it's not supposed to. And so the bigger issue now is that Medicare is catching on to this and they're starting to call research clinics. And this is new to me and I know a lot of sponsors probably, I'm sure the bigger ones have dealt with this, but the smaller ones out there like the biotechs, I'm pretty sure they have not dealt with this yet and there might be some issues here as far as uh, I mean this could be a game changer going forward the way we have to report SAEs and the way the billing has to take place because for a long time it seems that the sponsors were just letting Medicare get billed sometimes the hospitals this is not often the case but there are some hospitals that um, are uh, that were unscrupulous that actually would bill Medicare for the bed days and the services and also find out later that this that the patient was in a study and bill the sponsor too so they'd have double billing um, they basically charge twice for the same service again that happened less often but I've heard of numerous cases where that has occurred and a lot of these hospitals have been shut down for fraud Medicare fraud in general for other uh, issues uh, and again, I won't mention names, but you can just Google it and you'll find plenty. So just something to keep an eye on. If your research clinic gets a phone call from Medicare and they will be hostile with you uh, and they will be persistent, just call your sponsor, call the project manager and, uh, and direct Medicare to them. And I know you project managers out there will love me for this, but uh, that's what I would do. Um, I would not violate HIPAA laws until you're specifically told by the sponsor that it's okay. And even then, I would probably double check with an attorney if you have that luxury. Um, but just to be safe, just to be on the safe side, send the Medicare person to your project manager for the study and have them specifically tell you which study participants exactly they want because you don't want to just give them all of your study participants names and phone numbers and social security numbers if they're looking for SAEs you probably only have a few of those not it's not every patient so that's what I would do uh, I want to thank and much more on this to come later definitely I think this could be a possible game changer going forward big shout out to my clinical trial group producers South Coast Clinical Trials, Sarah Elizabeth Siegler, Resolve Research Solutions, Accurate Clinical Trials, PTNR, Erdhart Clinical Research, Tradestone LLC, Breakthrough Clinical Trials, Kulkarni Law Firm, Biofarm Systems, Zymewire, Mozio, St. Paul Medical Research Center, Investigator Research Group, Phlebotomy Services, Atria Clinical Research Management, Rheumatic Disease Clinical Research Center, Nexus Research LLC and I'm missing one because I did not put you on there yet but they're based out of Connecticut and I guarantee you the next video you'll be on here. Um, this is Dan from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.